next step in this operation or the next step I'm taking in this operation, I'm going to make all of these gears in the back. Now it is just standard straight up parting, turning, boring, and I don't see the need to videotape that for you. I do apologize if anybody was looking forward to seeing that done, but I will show the assembly of everything and, and some of the details and notes that are called out for each of the sets, because there are a few that are pushed together, like they're step downs and reducers and accelerators and whatever, reducing gears and uh, step up. Now this guy right here, this spindle gear, is this one on the print? Let's take a look at that. Now the one thing about that that bothers me, there is an oblique set screw that goes in at an angle, a very mild angle, but when it contacts the spindle, the potential for that to kick is probably going to be elevated. Now I have not done that yet, and that's strictly because when I want this thing to run, I do not want this gear running out. It cannot touch the cone pulley, and it cannot touch the inside of the casting. So it's got to run fairly true. Got a couple ideas on how I'm going to knock that out, but I haven't quite done it yet. So let's take a look at the stock, the charts, the dimensions on these guys right here, and we'll get to it. The material provided is already splined and it is not marked, so it's going to be up to you to try to figure out what goes where. And that's relatively easy just going by size. Try to figure out what has how many teeth, put those together, and all the other ones that are the finer gears. I'll just go by the diameter, and the diameter will be the, uh, the dead clue for how many teeth there are for diameter. I made myself a chart and it comes in pretty handy. The family table that they give you for the gear clusters can be somewhat confusing because they have all these little asterisks everywhere and that means yeah there's a press fit or there's no hub or there's no set screw or whatever. But it's a good idea to acclimate yourself, familiarize yourself with what goes where because the ones that have the press fit, you have 189 bosses pressing into 188 holes and those are the ones that will be the two gears that are pressed together so keep an eye on it just going to give you a before shot spend a couple hours on this and if anything cool happens between now and then i'll come back to it but we're going to see some gears here in a minute stick around well if you don't have a bunch of bags laying around and you don't want to lose track of what these gears look like and you have a box of toothpicks or push pins or maybe T-head pins from a, a sewing kit. That's another good way to do it. I'm just going to put the numbers on this piece of paper right here. Here, number 64. That'll do.
Final step in this process is note number five. We have to make clusters, so there's a couple of these that have to press together. And unfortunately, gear number one is not part number one. Gear number one is part number 64, and seven is part number 58. So when you start doing this, and I really do wish that they had uh, called these out by part number and not gear number. It does make it a little harder. But here we go. I've got the part number on this side, and I've got the gear number on this side. And these are the combinations. One to seven, two to eight, three to nine. That makes it simple, just follow the numbers. These two little guys right here will press into these bigger number sevens. This little number 63 in the center of the screen will press into number eight. This one right there, one of those. And number three right there will press into number nine on the bottom. I will do that. I'll probably just show you one. It's no sense in showing you all of them. All right, let's do a couple of these up top first. Okay, if everything went well, this is what you should have at the end of the day. And I got to tell you, it's really not that hard to do this, but it's a pain in the neck trying to keep track of everything, what the numbers are. The numbering convention could be a little bit better, but make some notes for yourself and you'll be all right. I had planned for the next phase of this project to start producing all the small steel bushings that go inside of the gear so I could start mounting things and get a feel for exactly how everything's going to mesh and line up. Well, very much like the gears, all of these bushings, all of these sleeves are chart driven. But here we go. Mr. Question Mark dropped by this morning and said adjust, 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 adjust. It would be nice, and this is a very solid piece of constructive criticism for PM Research, this kit is fantastic. I have enjoyed it. I've enjoyed the challenge and the quality. But things like this adjust. Adjust what? Is it 500 long? Is it a 16th of an inch long? What's the anticipated uh, final size? Give us something to work from here. And when you look at exactly where those parts are, anything with the little red dot is what it says to adjust. So the standoff for the reverse lever mechanism, these little guys here, I mean, are they 200 long or, or what? So that is very frustrating when you hit an obstacle like that. And there are several of those on this print. There's another one, 34. And then you get over to the cross slide. Well, I didn't use 32 because I made dials for it. But you can see how having something to go on would be really nice. At any rate, I'm going to knock out a couple of these little 29s right here. And these are the ones that will go into the reverse lever. So I can mount the gears that I just made a couple minutes ago. And just take a look at it. I gotta see something spin before the end of this video. Let's do it. Okay, let's move on to the second part. And if we get lucky enough to catch it. guys are going to say how much backlash. Let's find out. I 
That is just beautiful. Love it. Not taking the screws out. It would look a lot nicer if they were hex head or square head or cap screws or anything. But there you go. And there's the balancing act from the operation when I made this reverse lever mechanism. That is unavoidable. But it's going to be buried behind a much larger gear. So here it is. Now I think it goes without saying that I am just not going to be happy today if I don't get this mounted. And a lot of these features are the fit at assembly, adjust at assembly. And, you know, I think I came up with a way to do that. So I've got a mock-up in the mill that I'd like to show you that might make your life easier if you ever have to encounter this and as far as the placement of the holes and the screws and whatever else I think the proof is in the pudding if you look at us from the back look at the concentricity of those lobes to the roots of the gears that is just couldn't ask for a nicer alignment than that I am very pleased with that The concentricity of the hole in the bottom looks pretty good. So if I were to say anything, I would say that this boss, this cast boss in the center was the feature that was off. Everything else looks great. All right, let's put this on a tripod and I will show you the mock-up. You're going to like it. Right now, all I have is a tube, 125 diameter tube held down by the 172 screw. This is a little collar that's a standoff because you need to figure out this is one of those adjust that they don't give you anything to start with. So we're going to start with that right there. And let's put the gear on first. Let's call this the spindle gear. That's the back side of the spindle. And here comes the reverse mechanism. You can see how things are starting to come together. With the handle, you need to figure out where this screw needs to be drilled. That is another one of the fit at assembly dimensions that they call out. That's one way. And when you pull it down into reverse, it's the other way. So somewhere in this range of motion right here, there needs to be a screw in the headstock. Let's not forget about the parent gear right there. I'm going to find the placement of that hole. I have numbers, and I'm just going to do it my way just to double check my numbers. And you may have seen before, visually, I put a mark on it looking through the slotted window to find out where the screw hole is going to be or how close it's going to be. With a pin in my drill chuck the same size as the screw, let's get down inside that slot. Yeah. yeah, let's just get down inside that slot. That's not going to be hard. There you go. Now with any kind of look, I'm going to index this back and forth. With success. It does appear to be crowding the bottom corner more than the top, but also have to pay attention to the size of the head of the screw at the same time. So I'm going to move it up just a hair.
and I think you can see the range of motion the bottom of the handle pretty much sets the sp splits the diameter of that pin I like it right where it is my digital readout is currently zeroed out take the gear cluster off and drop it down let's see how close to the visual marker not too bad the spot face that's underneath this collar has got to be the same depth on this side so I'm going to redo this one at the same time I do this one I'll we'll put it together and be back Okay, side note here. This is a crowned casting. It peaks up to the center and goes back down. So this one right now would be higher than anything that goes in right now. When I put this one in, I will relocate that hole and put that spot face exactly the same depth as that one. So that the standoffs that go on here, the little washers that go on there can be the same length. Well, after a couple of hours of goofing around, the make it fit at assembly wasn't half bad. It was easier to figure out than I thought it would be. Got a couple of collars on the back that are sunken down into the countersinks for the spot faces. And I'm not quite happy about this guy right here. I may make a plate that goes on there, but that head is awfully close to that bottom gear. This is the reverse mechanism here. Take a look at how this works. This is pretty cool. Look at the rotation of the bottom gear. The top and bottom gears are both going what I'm going to call clockwise right now. Now with the little shift of this handle right here, if you pull down on it, after you unloosen that screw, <laughs> there it is. Well, there it is. Okay, we're going to shift down here and engage the top one. Snug it. Top gear still going clockwise. Bottom gear now going counterclockwise. That is incredibly simple, but very elegant. I am I admire the, the guys that thought this up back in the 1890s. Pretty cool. Everything seems to be fairly well aligned. Do be careful of that set screw coming around right here. It does protrude a bit. And you do not want it to clip anything on the way around. And I'm telling you, there isn't a whole lot of room in there for that thing. These float about five thousandths. I've got this calculated in where this gear here floats about two. Precision is good, but you don't want to overdo it and have it binding up because you did something stupid. There you go. I would have to say that the reverse gear mechanism is a success. 
the gears all came out nice sharp tools guys minimal radius on those high speed tools and you won't be disappointed once again thank you very much for hanging in i do appreciate it joe pie advanced innovations in austin texas i'm out